Hey guys, Youngblood with you for the second round of answers, providing a bit more information on the new Origin starter line, being the 100 series, where I'm going to try and give you the short version of the updated information and what it means about this ship. Now, there were a couple questions surrounding what the introduction of this ship actually means for the 300 series, and the answer is basically that the 300 series, being a higher tier of ship, is going to be a little bit more defined and capable in those determined roles that each one of the ships actually has while the 100 series is going to be a little bit more generic in its uh, purposes at each level. Um, they also asked specifically about the 100i being the most exploration focused and how it compares to the 315p and if the 100 is actually going to see an increase in ability over the other models to help it actually be an explorer and the answer was nothing really. There's no plans to give it additional utility mounts like the 315 may have and the 315 is specifically designed with exploration in mind. So with that, I would probably say that the only thing that really makes the 100i an exploration ship is the range that it's going to have, which means that it should probably be labeled as more of a touring or a daily driver type of ship. Um, you may be able to upgrade avionics and sensors to something that's a little bit more exploration capable, but you're not really getting anything in the 100i that the 125 or the 135 couldn't do as well. That was made even clearer when they said that in a question about what is the advantage of the 100i model, they said that it's going to be a little bit more agile than the 135c, and the only real difference with the 125a is that the 25 has better speed and armament. So what that essentially means is that the 100i is a true entry-level ship in the Origin line, and the 125 and 135 are basically direct upgrades over the 100i. Now that goes on to be even more clear when they say that you're not gaining any extra space on the interior in the 100. Um, basically because the 125 having missiles are stored externally. Um, so the, the and same thing with the cargo on the 135. Um, so everything on the inside of all three of these should basically be the same. Basically meaning that the 100i is kind of a gimped version of the other two ships. Uh, they did throw in the caveat, though, that all three of these are still considered starter ships, so you're not going to really notice as much of a difference as you would in ships that are more specialized at higher price tiers. Now, in regards to the 125A, comparisons were made to the Aurora LN and the Mustang Delta, um, and how they're basically just much more powerful ships, and seeing if we should see or expect to see some buffs to the weapons or missiles, um, but CIG said that they're not planning on that right now. If they need to go back and update them later to make it competitive, they will, but the missiles are unlikely to change based on the mounts and kind of the sizing. Now, I think the real comparison there is to the Aurora LN because they, I guess they're just going to be doing things a little bit uh, differently, you know, with the LN being more focused on firepower and durability and the 125 being more focused on agility and speed. I don't really see, really see an issue there. I think that ends up balancing out. Now, I also think that the comparison to the Delta isn't a real good one, with that being more of a specialized militia-style ship at a higher price point, um, which I don't really consider to be a starter ship anymore. Now, speaking of comparisons, it was asked why you would opt for the 135C versus the Avenger Titan, considering the Titan carries more cargo, is cheaper, and has better weapons. Um, their answer was that the 135C offers decent cargo space and has longer range and better agility, especially considering the Avenger is going to be growing and that may impact the flight model a little bit. I would personally say that range would really be the only consideration there and that I would take the Titan over the 135C for almost every situation. Uh, other questions that were asked included um, about the air system uh, and if the specific speeds or conditions were more optimal for greater collection of fuel. And they said that there's going to be kind of this dynamic conversion rate at some point once this is implemented into the game. Um, as far as if there's going to be more than one uh, type of fuel tank to store what you're collecting, there is not. But the air system will provide more options for collection and kind of refining than other standard ships would have. Uh, in regards to the cargo stored internally, you are going to be able to see that cargo. And also on the interior, um, where you can't see in the pictures, basically in kind of the back left side of the ship, if you will, um, you're going to have cargo space and the uh, component panels to access the components in there. However, if you have cargo in there, it may end up blocking some of the less important components. So that's basically it. You know, I still find the ship very attractive and possibly useful for those that are looking for a daily driver or a small cargo ship. But I'd honestly say, based on where prices are today, the Avenger is going to be a better ship in the majority of use cases and has a better range of capabilities. So if you're looking at the 125 or 135 for combat or cargo, I'd go with the Titan all day. So if you have questions on any of this, please ask and get them in the comments. Otherwise, I appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned for a lot more coming soon and have yourselves a wonderful day. Take care.